Hello friends, welcome to Reach Goals. Today we are going to talk about online bus ticket booking system. Uh, if you are familiar with, uh, if you are not familiar with online bus ticket booking system, I would recommend to go into the sites like redbus.in or ticketgoose.com to figure out how they operate, understand at least the screen flows and come over here so that it will be easy for you to understand, right? So if you see online bus ticket booking system, uh, the most popular ones are redbus.in, ticketgoose.com and there are many more, right? So here we will talk about how do you how do you design a system for online bus ticket booking system? Uh, what are the software component, components involved into that? Uh, what are the most common issues we see, etc. Right? So I I would like to talk about four key topics into this. One is ticket booking. Second is getting data from the operators, uh, scaling the system, analytics and reporting. Right? So let's understand how this flow works. So you go into the system like redbus.in or ticketgoose.com, right? Uh, go to the site or you have an app, whatever it is, you can do that. Then you search for the bus, giving the destination as well as, you know, the, the place where you are starting from, etc. Then you go and select the bus from the inventory based on the price, whatever is recommended. Then you select the seat and you book the ticket uh, by giving all the locations like where you want to get into the bus, where you want to get down, etc and you do the payments, a payment can be a Visa or a MasterCard or, or the Paytm or any, anything which is offered by the company, etc. Then you do an order confirmation and you get an SMS notification and use the SMS notification or an email as a proof to enter into the bus and travel, right? So that is how the operation works. So if you look at that, it looks simple, but behind the scene, a lot of activities are happening to make sure a smooth trip is happening as well as, you know, the ticket a booking and experience are excellent, right? Let's go into the second topic, like getting data, f f getting da data, getting data from the operators, right? Uh, how do you how do you make sure you get right inventory into the system, right? Similar to the customers, a lot of importance is given to the operators so that they can feed the data into the system, and those data can be published to the customers and they can buy the ticket and the business or the ticket goes or the companies like Redbus can take a commission out of that and they can run the business out of it right if you look into the operators there are multiple ways the data comes into the system right one is they can let me look take the pointer so if you look into this area this is called this is an operator operator is can send the data directly into the database one is they send the feed file to the ftps the ftp in turn uh, does some passing uh, take the relevant inventory and they put into mysql database the second option they have is the companies like redbus they publish the apis and operator can directly connect to the apis and they can feed the data into the inventory and they are and there are cases you know the companies provide the a good UI so that the operator can go into the system and they can feed the related information and they can go into the inventory. And the other way they do is, is sometimes you know operators may not be efficient they may not be a big company and they may be having one or two buses in that case sometimes the operators can send a fax to the customer service and customer service looks into the inventory and they can partially or manually feed into the uh, database. So we, we don't even want to ignore one or two buses. So we want to get more inventory. So we are giving equal number of opportunities for all the bus operators, right? So that's how the data gets in, the, that's how the data gets fed into the inventory, right? So now think of a case uh, like, you know, uh, multiple data are coming from different operators across the country and we want to make sure all the data gets into the system in the right way. So how do we do that, right? So we want to have a very good validation mechanism at this location right sorry at this location once the data comes into the system we want to pass it make sure all the data is valid before we feed into the inventory right otherwise what happens is if there are if there are duplicate data or if there are missing data or if it is a inefficient data it is going to directly reflect it to the customers and it is going to break the system right so we don't want to provide those kind of opportunities that's why we need to have an excellent validation engine over here to make sure we get the right data into the inventory system and it goes into our database right
So next thing I want to talk about is the complete infrastructure or whatever is going to exist out of this online bus ticketing, online bus ticket booking system, right? So if you look into the if you look into the system, the four key players who are interacting into the system are the customers, the customer service, the operators, and the business team, right? So customers, as like us, they are the public and they want a full facility to operate and to book a ticket, right? So what are the operations they are doing? One is they go into the system, they register themselves. So we need a module or an API or a web service to create an account, get the user information, profile, etc. And that is fed into the MySQL. So that is why we have accounting APIs or you can call it as an accounting restful services, which is which can be a microservice. Which is running on the Docker container, which is uh, which is put into any of the Google Cloud or maybe Amazon Web Service, etc. Right? It can be run over that. The other is the booking module. The booking module is plays a key role where you look for uh, after you look for the ticket, then you try to book by giving them certain informations, and that information is fed into the MySQL database, right? And what is this notification? If you look into the systems like booking systems or ticket booking systems, what happens is it, they play notification APs plays a major role out of that. One is as soon as you book a ticket, you get an SMS notification saying that you know your ticket is booked. So that's why uh, notification AP is over here. Uh, other thing is this the other thing is the business sends a lot of notifications or email related to the offers, uh, related to uh, cancellations or related to trip changes, etc. Right? Those things has to be interacted through the notification API. So I have created a different API for notification, where uh, where uh, the system can use this notification API to send the notifications. Right? So offers. What is offers? Offers pl plays a major role again in the e-commerce systems. Right? Nowadays, if you see, the lot of offers are given during the holiday time or may maybe to promote the business etc so we have a different api where the offers are provided over here so where any system across the company can interact with the offers api and they can send the offers to the business sorry from the business to the the customers right so that's why we have a offers uh, offers services and then the next item is cms what is cms cms is nothing but it's a content management system so content management system is nothing like you know if you look into any of the applications a contents are managed from the business it is not from the developers or not from the customer service right it is managed by the business so today they want to change the complete the home page look and feel by saying that you know we are going to promote for holidays or we are going to promote for this diwali right whatever 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 business case it whatever the business case is right now business can create its own content and they can publish into the system and without any deploying or without any changes from the application side the content can be published to the customer and they can change or they can schedule the content from saying that i want this content from day one to day two or from for this month or whatever whatever business is setting right so that is where the content management system plays a key role right? and some of the things like you know legal legal things can keep on changing all of the sudden there may be a, something like you know we want to pub business want to publish the, about a new legal information and it has to pass across the customers in the home page so they can publish the content and it can get reflected into the uh, reflected at the UI and the customer who, who, who is sitting on the system can watch that immediately right so that is why we need content management system there are a lot of content management systems in the market like you know uh, WCS is there Adobe experience manager is there so those are all uh, a third party or you know most popular thing but still we can develop our own content management system uh, and you can based on our requirements we can we can utilize it for the any of the business team and the next service i have is an inventory system so inventory system plays a major role in a bus ticketing system what is inventory systems like you go into an application like a bus ticketing system and you search for a bus ticket and you get certain results right like you know what are the bus available what time it is going to start and in etc those those information comes from the inventory system and as we talked earlier all this the inventory data is fed by the operators and it is validated by the the companies or validated by the engineers whoever is working on this module and it goes into the inventory system right and inventory system is not only used by uh, customers it is used by customer service because if they want to book a book a system sorry if you want to book a ticket by calling the customer service the customer service can also interact with the inventory system and get the tickets and get it booked right or even the business team can business team sometimes in, interacts with the inventory APIs to make sure the right data is coming from the 
operators and it is fully utilized by the customers right or if they want to change the frequency or if they want to remove certain bus immediately due to some uh, due to some legal issues or if you know if they're not making enough profit business team can hack can raise a case to say that you know i want to stop this bus and i don't want to execute this for this day or this particular time right so they can do that as well so that is why the inventory system is one which is getting interacted by multiple users and it should, it should be very clean and should be more efficient for anybody to look into that and it should have an up-to-date data for example if i say up-to-date data it should not show a wrong inventory right so i should have whatever is showing the screen should be the right one and it should be or having the enough information where the customer can make utilize and have a safe travel right so inventory is very important when you consider when you consider across uh, whatever the system i would say inventory is more important it is very and is one of the one of the aps which is very highly used right okay let's talk a little bit about analytics and reporting so what what is analytics and reporting like you know business team interacts with our system and they want to get what is happening within our uh, within our application or what is happening with respect to the data so business team what it does is uh, they always generate the reports uh, based on number of tickets booked or based on uh, the cancellations or whatever it is so what happens here is all our data which are into the mysql or if you have the inf inventory information in the nosql they are parsed and they are taken through a jobs and it is going into the enterprise data warehousing so business team can query that and get the relevant information and they can make sure the business is running in the way, way in the way they are expecting right for one of the key case i would say is uh, let's say uh, let's say for example they want to figure out uh, what how many tickets are sold in uh, for the next month right so that if the number of tickets are more uh, they are if the, if the if the traffic is more into the system or the number of tickets are booked uh, booked very highly they can increase the number of inventory as well right they can or uh, they can give some deals to the customers and they can forecast the profit etc so that is why uh, they keep on uh, interacting with the enterprise data, data warehousing to get the reports and the other use case i could say is let's say some of they if they figured out you know for the next week the ticket sales is not an expected pay. if they want to push some deals right even in that case what they can do is uh, based on the data whatever they have they can provide some offers to to get more customers or to get more customers coming into the system and book the tickets right so next area i want to cover is uh, scaling the system the scaling is a vast topic it, and again it is a never ending topic right you cannot scale the system in one day the scaling happens from the day when you start the application until the application exists right so scaling if you look into these type of system scaling happens across right scaling happens from the customer side scaling happens from the uh, customer service side scaling happens from the operator side scaling happens even from the business side right so what is scaling so let's say if you have a uh, hundred users today and if you want if all of the sudden if you know if tomorrow if you have thousand users or even after months or year if you have ten thousand users and if you look into the system it has to scale across across all the locations from the network from the routers from the apis from the storage from what not whatever you see in the screen everything has to be scaled to meet the demand right so how do you scale the system so let's say if you have uh, microservices over here i uh, <coughs> this area has to be scaled to meet the number of traffic so now if nowadays if you see you have a lot of uh, software ready-made softwares like aws or gcp where you can do an auto configuration saying that you know if you are if the number of transactions is more i want to increase the number of uh, number of parts or number of containers right so other option is let's say a lot of people are hitting your booking service and you realize your cpu threshold is increasing now you can put a configuration like you know my when my cpu capacity goes beyond uh, 60% I want to have one more additional part, right? And even the second part, you can say, hey, my CPU is going again more than 60%, so I want to increase the part. So that's something like an you know, auto configuration we can do. Or in some cases, what, what else you can do is, let's say you, you, you come to know that there is some holiday season coming out, like, you know, Diwali or something like that, right? In that case, you want to scale from a day, uh, five or six days before Diwali and, you know, at least one or two weeks after Diwali you can you know the dates exact dates when it has to be scaled so you can put the dates I want to be I want to increase my uh, the containers uh, all the components within lying within the within the application to be scaled so that 
uh, based on the availability of the dates and based on the configuration it can scale right so that's how you do the configuration uh, configuration at the at the aws or google cloud or to make sure this app applications are getting scaled or you know the web services are getting scaled and you and let's take let's talk about scaling in this location right so let's say number of inventory let's say when you started the company you have five or six um, operators and all of the sudden within one year you have two thousand to three thousand operators right so the num ftp component whatever you are parsing over here it doesn't scale to whatever demand which you have set initially so this area has to be scaled so we have to add more number of boxes over here to make sure it is able to get enough number of uh, feeds from different operators and you know the parsing happens in the way you are expecting and it goes into the inventory system similarly when the customer service when the number of tickets sold, tickets sold or more you are going to get a lot of customer service calls so we have to increase with respect to the number of uh, staffs who are working on the customer service, we have to increase the op software components working from this area, which can interact directly with the web services, web services, and that area has to be scaled, right? And if you look at the business team, similarly, when I said, you know, when number of traffic is or number of traffic is increased, and if if, if, if the number of traffic is increased, obviously we'll get more number of tickets booked into the system, and the data generated into the MySQL or EW, EW, EDW is going to be more. Even in that case, business team has to parse large set of data. So even even the reporting engine has to be scaled in a way to make sure the data is on right, uh, the, the data is right, and the business is getting the right information. So these are the key areas where we have to focus on scaling, right? So other area I want to talk about over here is notification queue. So what is notification queue? So primarily I have set up the notification queue to send the emails or to send the SMS. See when you when you we have a lot of data after you book a after you book a ticket the order confirmation is going to sit in MySQL and I want to send an email or SMS notification uh, to the customer saying that your ticket has been booked and uh, whatever the confirmation number and all has to go seamlessly to the customers right so here I have added a notification queue what I'm setting here is I will have a job running over here and it will take the data in the badges from MySQL and it will send to the queue so queue in turn connects to the email services or the notification services over here and it sends the sms or emails right so now let's talk why do we need need to have a notification queue let's say if i have a point to point connection there is a high possibility it could fail right if it fails we, it's very difficult to figure out uh, at what level it has failed and what are the emails i have to i have i have to keep generating or what are the emails i have to resend etc right so that is why one of the reason we have a notification queue so what notification queue does is uh, it, it will queue all the information related to the email in the queues and we will have a service fetching from the queue and directly sending the email notification and other thing is if you have a notification queue today I'm sending an email and SMS tomorrow I want to send something like a push notification to apps right uh, instead of setting a new infrastructure I can just write a uh, just like another job which connects to the notification queue and get the relevant information from this queue and send a push notification to apps so i don't want to do any extra extra work on top of this area right everything is ready made ready madely available in the queue so i can use those things and make use of uh, sending the data from the from the application to the customers right right and i and this is something i re really interesting topic i want to talk and I want to share my experience. Uh, what is going to happen with respect to the issues in these kind of in these kind of applications, right? So these are all real time issues which we face on day to day life in your applications, right? So uh, first one I want to talk is five uh, XS errors or CPU spikes. So five XX errors is like you know if if your service is not available, what is going to happen, right? Let's take an example, right? Uh, now. I want to check for a user profile, right? So if, if I look for a user profile, let's say, uh, for example, if I am uh, if if I am not able to access the user profile, let's assume that you already has created a user profile and somebody is logging into your system and going to the user profile. That information is not available to you, but still the backend could have some information related to the users, but not all informations are available. So what do I want to do? Do I want to ignore that customer or still I want to book the ticket, right? Now, any any business will not allow you to 
show an error in the UI saying that your, your, your service is down, so it cannot allow you to book the system, right? So what, what happens is if you have a minimum set of information, still we can bypass through and do a ticket booking, right? So, so those are the some of, some of the options, you know, even if in, if in a case, if a service is down, if the service is not making more important in booking a ticket, still we can collect certain information from the customers and we can connect back in the offline to see whether we can book the ticket or not, right? So still, still, uh, these are the things which are happening in the uh, real time, um, real time applications, right? Let's talk about CPU spikes. So let's say you built a you built a, a great code uh, during a performance testing. Everything has passed. Now at one point of time, due to your bad bad data coming from the backend, your application is not performing and CPU is spiking. What will happen if you CPU spikes, right? Let's say let's say you already set a threshold, like you know, if your CPU is more than 60%, I want to add one more part, right? Now if your CPU keeps on spiking, and if you are not noticing that the number of parts or the number of containers will keeps on growing and it is going to add cost to your company, right? So now I have to figure out that and fix that issue. How do you fix that? So what normally happens is we set a limitation, like you know, if number of con number of containers are exceeding more than three or four, uh, let's say let's say you raise an alert from the back end to the customer service or at least to the service delivery, saying that your number of parts are increasing. So now the developers go into that and figure out why the parts are getting increased even though the traffic is less. Now they figured out it is because of CPU spike in bad code. That's where you take a decision to fix that issue or you roll back to the previous version and it, a decision can be based on the situations whatever it is right so you take a decision to fix it or roll back it or or you provide a hot fix or whatever it is so this is one of the common error it could have happened when you are doing when you are when you are not tested properly and your versus when your application goes into the system right and the second thing i want to talk about is a repeated file from the operated feed so you you have a provider an option for an operator to FTP and it goes into the inventory. What happens if the operator keeps on sending the same file throughout the day? Do we have a mechanism to validate that? Right. So we don't want to have the same same file repeatedly and it goes into the inventory. So it is go, it is going to clog our FTP server if they keep on sending it. Right. So we cannot control the operator, but we have an option to ignore those files and you know you can easily uh, inform to the operator saying that you are keep on sending the repeated file and you know if keep on if you are repeating this file your inventory will not go into the uh, in, in will not go into the system right so there are there are cases like that right it's it's a real time case where operator um, by mistakenly can send the multiple times and it can go into the system and you know you keep on feeding and you are sending the wrong information to the customer so that's where your validation engine comes into picture and you know uh, based on repeated file you send a when the rep files are repeated you send an alert notification to your service delivery team or operations team saying that files are getting repeated and we have to take a necessary uh, necessary action to fix it or to intimate to the operator to stop sending that And third real time issue is notification queue overflow. What is notification queue overflow, right? So let's say you have you have defined a system or you have provided a certain amount, certain amount of capacity to have a notification queue. Now from MySQL, what happens is this job gets pulled the data. This job gets data from MySQL and keeps on sending into the my, my notification queue. Let's assume that notification queue is not. Uh, sending the emails or the job which is trying to fetch the data from notification queue has failed right so what happens here is the notification queue will keep on getting the data from mysql and it will start to grow and it will overflow right so how do you figure out that so that is where we need a proper alerting mechanism or monitoring mechanism where we have to keep on monitoring this notification queue how the how the data in that is getting transferred to the customers or it's still staying in the queue itself now let's say if it goes beyond a limit again we have to ma have a mechanism to figure out like you know if the queue exceeds uh, beyond certain limit like you know uh, then you send an alerting to the service delivery or operations so that they can involve into the system and they can you know they can fix that or they can stop the notification queue or you know they can take an action to stop this job so that notification queue is not overflowing until they fix the issue and make sure all this uh, all this queue information is uh, getting sent, all this new information is sent to the customers as an emails they don't run this job after some time when everything is clear and fixed they again they restart this job so these are the uh, typical operations done by the operations team 
or the service delivery team who is who is making sure the system is running healthy 24 by 7 right okay actually i want to talk more about scaling but i don't think we can complete scaling uh, in this topic so i would i would uh, recommend you to ask some questions or comments so that we can talk more about scaling and i will also prepare another uh, another topic related to scaling in specific area <coughs> sorry in specific areas so that it can be it's so that it can be more helpful to people who are watching right right as i said if you have any comments or uh, if you want to ask questions you can put in the comments section so that i can i'm very happy to answer that and if you want to watch more videos you can subscribe you can like and you can share with your friends uh, so that <coughs> so that you know others can watch this and get benefit out of that and pretty much that's it i have thank you for watching bye